Welcome to Thursday Nights. This is our final Elijah sermon, and as we say every Thursday night, we want to welcome you all to Oikos. Oikos is our humble attempt to allow Jesus to carry us home where we find rest and we're refreshed for that work ahead. So like I just mentioned, we're ending Elijah tonight. Tonight we're going through the destination of the man of God, and we've been going through this whole journey um, since the quarantine pretty much began, and this idea of... Um, just seeing what makes a man woman of God. You know, what's the DNA there? What's, what helps us go through life as we're walking in this journey? And so we've been seeing that it begins, you know, with that commitment to Jesus, of course, right? We commit our lives to Jesus and we step out in faith as we walk towards our final destination, which is for the believer, heaven. And so we see that we're, we're going through this journey, though, through this whole ordeal. And this journey of when the promise is given to where the promise is fulfilled. And in between, we have this, this road, you could say, and that's the journey that we're talking about. You know, what happens from I commit my life to Jesus Christ to I've passed away and now I am in heaven. And he says, well done, good and faithful servant. This right here, this area, this is what makes the man woman of God. This is what leaves a legacy. This is what changes others. This is what changes you. And we see that this, this journey is unique to every individual. Not all of us have a cookie cutter journey. You know, my journey is not going to be like Jonathan's journey. It's not going to be like Nehemiah's journey. You know, it's not going to be like my wife, Katie's journey. We all have our own unique journey and the way that it is. The thing that we do have in common that unites us is that love for Jesus Christ, that love for God. So just to recap really quickly before we start today, the whole series, to get us up to date and see where we're at now. We see we began long ago, we began way back in March, and we saw this idea of the man, the woman of God. It begins with the making of the man, woman of God, right? That's what we talked about the first week. And we saw this idea that God will isolate us as believers. And the isolation, it's, it's not punishment, but it's working in us. It's bringing us to a place where we will recognize the voice of God compared to all the other voices. Because as men, as women of God, we need to hear that voice. We need to be able to discern his voice from all the other vo voices. We see then that after that comes the confrontation. Every man, every woman of God is going to have a confrontation. And that a confrontation is we must stand for truth, we must stand for justice, and we must walk in this world that wants to dishonor God, honoring God. And at those times where we need to present evil as evil, we need to stand up, we need to rise and say that is evil. We can't sugarcoat it. We need to confront this evil is what we're told as a man, as a woman of God. We also saw that the prayer of the man, of the woman of God, we saw prayer was such an essential needed thing to the believer, because it is in prayer that our faith grows. It is in prayer where we have that faith that Jesus says that will eventually even move mountains. That is achieved by praying, by coming before him, by communing with him, by growing in that faith. Then we saw, we also had the depression of the man of God, and we saw that sometimes it's a little easy for us to look around, right? We want to do the Moses, and we want to look to the left, we want to look to the right, and we forget to look at the Lord. And what do we do when we're looking all around? We start looking at circumstances. We start looking at things. We start looking at individuals. <clears throat> and these are the voices we begin to hear instead of hearing the voice of the Lord. And we saw that when we start to hear these voices, they jack us up. They mess us up. And we need to be brought back to that place. We saw that God brought Elijah back to that place of isolation so that he can hear once again that small, still voice of God. We also saw the mantle of the man of God. We saw that it's not just about us, but it's also about the next generation after us. And we need to be pouring into them as they're growing. We need to continue to just be giving of ourselves for the next generation. And we need to pour and pour and pour until Jesus comes back. We also saw the obedience of the man of God. We saw how we need to obey in all that we do. You know, regardless of what it means, you want to be a man of God, you want to be a woman of God, 
Obedience is your lifestyle. Obedience is your lifestyle, regardless of it all. And we saw that it's through that obedience that your joy is fulfilled. It is through that obedience that you are in the love of God. And then we saw finally last week the witness of the man, the woman of God. We saw that we are called to be a witness. We're surrounded in a culture that says God is dead. There is no God. And we are called to prove this false. We are called to show the world that there is a God and that his name is Jesus Christ. And that is our purpose. That is our calling as believers. And today we're going to close out our journey. We're going to see that the final destination for every man of God, for every woman of God, is heaven, is eternity with God, or we're going home. You know, here at Oikos, we're all about home, right? That word Oikos, home. We're all about Jesus carrying us home. And so we see that that is where we're going to end up this evening. So why don't you bow your heads and just pray with me for our word tonight. So Father in heaven, as we just come before you, we give you all thanks, Lord. We give you all praise. We ask that you just lead our way, lead the path, Lord God. And we just pray for all the individuals that are out there right now, Lord God, that we just pray that you continue to keep all the essential workers safe, Lord God. We just pray people that are sick, your Holy Spirit is touching and anointing and healing, Lord God. And we just pray for us, Lord, that we don't forget you're on that throne, that we don't forget that we're created in your image. We're created to be in relation with others and with that, that we are texting individuals, we are calling individuals that are around us. We're reminding them of your love for them. So Lord, speak to us tonight, reveal your truth, and we ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So we see today we are going to close out in 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 2. And in 2 Kings chapter 2, we're going to begin with the first couple of verses, and it says this. And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went out. Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came up to Elisha and said to him, do you know that the Lord will take away your master from, from over you today? And he said, yes, I know. Keep silent. So we see that it seems that this was a known thing, that Elijah was going to be taken away. Elijah was going to go with God, and we see that he's kind of making his rounds, it looks like. He's going to be going around, and he's going to be saying his goodbyes. And we see at also, not only is he saying his goodbyes, he's testing Elisha. And he's testing the loyalty of Elisha. We see that wherever they stop, he's going to tell Elisha, you could stay here. You don't have to come anymore. You could stay here. But we see time and time again, Elisha is like, nope, where you go, I will go. Where you step, I will step. I will not leave you. I will stay with you till the very end. And so we see that they stop at Bethel. They go to Bethel, and right when they get to Bethel, the prophets come. They're talking, and the prophets go up to Elisha, and right away they're like, dude, we're sorry, man. He's going to leave you today. And we see Elisha's replies like, shut up. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I know. Let's just move on. And we see that that's physically what they do in the next verses. We see that Elijah says to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? So he answered, yes, I know. Keep silent. So we see it's, it's the similar thing, right? People know he's leaving, he's doing his rounds, and people keep coming to Elisha. Dude, I'm sorry. Dude, I'm sorry. He's going to leave you. And Elisha's pretty much like, kind of looks like he's angry now. Because we see that there's more. It, it goes from keep silent, period, to keep silent, exclamation point. You know, he's like, dude, quit it already. And as we start to see here what's going on, it's that idea of, Elisha doesn't know, doesn't need to be reminded that Elijah's leaving. He knows. And he's just trying to be there for his friend. He's just trying to enjoy <clears throat> the last moments that they have together. And we see these people just keep reminding him, oh, but he's leaving. Oh, but he's leaving. Oh, but he's leaving. And we've been there before, right? When Maybe when we go visit family that don't live near us. 
<laughs> and we're just gathering together and we just want to enjoy those last moments instead of just, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to leave tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to leave tomorrow. But instead, you know, we want to build memories and we see so Elijah just, just telling them, you guys, just let me enjoy these last moments. Keep silent. You don't have to remind me. I know he's leaving. So we see that they continue on and it says, then Elijah says to him again, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on and 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up and struck the water and it was divided this way and that way. So that the two of them crossed over on dry ground and so it was that when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, as what I may do for you before I am taken away from you, Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So we see that one more time, Elisha tests Elisha and Elijah's like, bro, just like stay here. And Elisha's like, no, I will be with you till the very end. So then Elijah's like, all right, then let's go. And we see that now they're going to the Jordan. They get to the Jordan. Elijah takes his mantle off. He strikes the water and we see the water splits. Similar to the Red Sea with Moses and to the Jordan River with Joshua. We see the water splits. They walk across and we see that at a distance these prophets are watching them. So it says 50 of the, of the sons of the prophets are just there watching. And then Elijah's like, all right, you know what, Elisha? What can I do for you before I leave? I want to put a blessing on you. I want to I give you something. What can I do for you? And Elijah's like, give me a double portion. I want a double portion of your spirit. And we really need, need to see what, this, what he's saying in this. Because in this double portion, he's not saying, I want to do twice of, of work that you do. I want to do, I want to be known twice as better as you do. But we see the idea, it has the idea of having that, that portion of the firstborn. He's asking for the firstborn portion. In Deuteronomy 21, 17, it, it states that. It states that this idea of giving to the, oh my gosh, I completely ruined everything. Sorry, Curly. It's okay. Uh, let's take it from the verse again. Okay. So you want me to read the verse again? Yeah. Okay. Okay, perfect. I read, okay. We can confuse him, but okay. So we see then in verse 6, it says, Then Elijah says to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on and 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up and struck the water and it was divided this way and that so that the two of them were crossing over the under high ground. So it was that when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask, what may I do for you before I'm taken away from you? And Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So we see that essentially Elisha gets tested one more time by Elijah. Elijah's like, stay here. And Elisha's like, no, I already told you, we're going we're gonna to be together till the end. I will be at your side till the very end. And so we see they go. They go to the Jordan. They get to the Jordan River. Elijah takes his mantle, hits the water. The water splits. And they walk on dry ground. We see a, a similar, um, similar circumstance as Moses. Remember when Moses crossed through the Red Sea with the Israelites? Red Sea splits. Joshua crosses the Jordan River with the Israelites. It splits. And so we see a similar thing happening here now. They, they walk through the dry ground as the river splits. And we see that there's about 50 individuals, 50 other prophets that stay behind at a distance, just watching, just waiting to see what's going to happen. And so we see Elijah's like, Elisha, I want to bless you before I go. How can I bless you? And Elisha's like, I want a double portion. And it's really interesting because a lot of times we say when we hear, I want a double portion from Elisha is, well, he gets a double portion. You know, Elijah did this. Elisha did twice as much as him. And that's not necessarily what Elisha is meaning by this here. Elisha is going back to Deuteronomy 21.17 where it talks about the portion that is given to the firstborn. So the firstborn of a house inherits a double portion compared to the other brothers. And this is what Elisha is talking about. 
Elisha wants to be regarded as the successor of Elijah, as his firstborn in a sense, regarding to the ministry. So this is what Elisha is asking for. This is what he is asking from Elijah. Even though he's been already designated as Elijah's successor, he still wants to see that blessing. He still wants that spiritual power to be put upon him. You know, he wants the people to know of the calling that he has received. And so in other words, what he's, what he's telling Elijah is, look, I know this is my calling, but I want that blessing because I want to be equipped. I want to be fully equipped for the calling that I, that's been put upon me. And so we see then the response of Elijah to all this. And Elijah tells them, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened that as they continued on and talked, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and his horsemen. So he saw him no more. And he took hold of his old clothes and tore them into pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. And then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that, and Elisha crossed over. So we see Elijah gets raptured. We see that a chariot of fire comes. Whirls them away, and he goes up in a whirlwind, it says. And we see that Elisha's just there, like, what the heck? We see that he has a freak out moment, and he's like, my father, my father, the horseman and the chariot of Israel. Or in other words, what, is, what he's saying here is the strength of Israel. God is the strength of Israel, is what he's saying. He's getting a revelation of the power of God. And we see then, essentially, Elisha, both literally and spiritually, be takes up that mantle of Elijah and he becomes now the successor of the ministry of Elijah. He grabs that mantle and he puts it on. And we see here the gift of free will. Because remember, he was told, you're going to be the successor. But the mantle, notice how it, it didn't land on Elisha. The mantle lands on the ground and he has to pick it up. He has to make the choice still to want to walk in that calling that he's been given. And it's the same for you and me. People may pray over us. People may prophesy over us. There might be calling declared over us. We still have to make that choice to walk in that calling, to take those steps. So we see that he does that. He grabs that mantle and he goes on and he begins. And we see right there, we see what he does. We see that he doesn't just look at the ground and, and keep walking. He begins to even right there work in that succession of that ministry that he has been given. We see he gets to the Jordan. He takes that mantle off and hits the water again. And he asks, where is the God of Elijah? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Notice how Elijah just hit it and they walked. But Elisha asks. Because Elisha wants the people to see that now he is the successor. So he is pretty much telling the people as he's hitting the water. He's calling out to the Lord. And essentially what he's saying by the statement is, you guys, Lord, are you with me? Bam. And we see the water split. The Lord showing that he is the successor, that he is with them. Spurgeon puts it this way. And Spurgeon says, and when you have got their mantle, do not waste precious time in lamentations about them anymore. Get to your business. There is a river in your way. What then? Well, go to the Jordan as the prophet Elisha did and try to, try to pass it. Say not, where is Elijah? But where is the Lord God of Elijah? Elijah is gone, but his God is not. Elijah has gone away, but Jehovah is present still. And this statement is coming from when he tears his clothes. Elijah tears his clothes in the Hebrew culture. That means that he's mourning, that he's upset. And so many of us do this. So many of us follow individuals, and when they pass away, we just mourn. And we forget that the ministry must go on. We forget that the ministry is not this individual's, but it's the Lord's. And we see here what Spurgeon is telling us. is like, look, Elijah's gone. 
but God is still here. And God is now working through Elisha, and that is what we need to see. We need to see that God is going to work through the Elisha that we're going to leave when we go back home, when we go back to that destination that we are called to be at. And so we see the final verses tonight, and we see in verses 15 to 18, then it says, And now when the sons of the prophets who were from Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Then they said to him, Look now, there are fifty strong men with your servants. Please let them go and search for your master, lest perhaps the Spirit of the Lord has taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. As he said, You shall not send anyone. But when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, He sent them. Therefore they sent fifty men, and they searched for three days, but did not find him. And when they came back to him, for he had stayed in Jericho, he said to them, Did I not tell you? Don't go. And so we see the men come up to Elisha and all these prophets, and they're like, Dude, you're the man. God is with you. You are the successor. But, hey, we got a group of guys here. You want us to go check if God dropped Elijah somewhere else? Because remember, God would do this. Remember, God would take Elijah and take him somewhere. He did it in the New Testament, too. Remember, he takes Philip. After he talks to the Ethiopian, it says that Philip just gets taken away. So they're like, well, you want to see if maybe God has um, placed him somewhere? Let's go look for him. And Elisha's like, dude, don't waste your time. He's gone. And they just urged and urged and urged to the point that he was just uh, shamed. And he's like, you know what? Just go. And we see that they go. They go and live for him. And he's gone. They don't find him. And he's like, I told you guys. I told you not to go. And so we see the ending of the man of God. And we see the ending of a man of God who finishes well. A man of God who goes home to be with Christ. A man of God who goes home and he finds that rest. And we see that that is the destination, that is the end to every man and woman of God. The end is that we shall be with the Lord. But notice that it's not just about for us, it's not just about that end. It's not just about us being with the Lord, but it's at the same time that legacy that we're leaving behind, those individuals that we've poured out to because the church must grow. The church must continue until the Lord comes back. So it's so crucial for us as men, as women of God, to be pouring on to that next generation so that that next generation could pour on to that next generation and the church may continue. And when we go home, we shall be with the Lord and we shall be at rest, waiting for these individuals to now come home as they're on their unique journey. So as we close and we wrap up this series, you guys, you know, we've seen the trip coming home. And we discussed, like I mentioned a little while ago, this idea that it's, it's about the individuals and it's about us. And at the end of the day, it's about honoring God. It all goes down. Are, are we honoring and truly seeking God's will? You want to be a man? You want to be a woman of God? Then you need to ask yourself that in your life. Are my choices, are my decisions, are they truly honoring God? Are they bringing glory to his name? We see it's a journey. We see it's a process. There was times where mighty in prayer. There was times where we're taking down prophets. There's times where we're in a cave asking God to just kill us. We're suicidal. We're done. You know, there's times where we stand up for truth. It's a journey with different turns and different places. But we see, though, it's a journey that must not be done alone. It's a journey that needs to be done with companionship. It's a journey that needs to be done with legacy in mind, with leaving someone in mind to take up that mantle once we're home. And we see this pattern throughout the whole scriptures. Moses had Joshua, Naomi had Ruth, Jesus had the 12 apostles, Peter had Mark, Paul had Titus, Timothy. And that's the pattern that we need to see, you guys, in our lives. That pattern that we carry the legacy with us, and at the same time, we are bringing glory to God so that we may too finish well, and then we may too walk humbly before Him as we enter those gates and as we say, my Lord and my God, when we see Jesus Christ sitting on that throne, when we are home. 
So Oikos, this was our journey through the life of Elijah. I pray that you were blessed by it. I pray that you were able to receive and glean some things for our daily lives, some practical things for believers as we just walk through this journey. And we will continue um, doing this for you guys. We're going to continue our new series on now, the prophet Elisha, as we're continuing through this. We still don't know yet on when we will be meeting in person back. So we will be continuing on Elisha until we meet back again. But we will be keep you posted. Make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. We are Oikos. Make sure that you're following us on Instagram and on Facebook as we will be putting the updates of what's going on and what's happening. But we love you guys. We miss you all. We can't wait to be just back together again as a family. Just here, hanging out, listening to the messages, listening to worship, listening to Bruce's blah, 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 he would say. But just being together as a family. So why don't we just go before the Lord and let's just pray. So Father in heaven, as we just close out this series, we give you all thanks, Lord. We give you all praise. We ask that you just continue to be with us, Lord, that we may finish the race well, Lord God, that we may finish that race that you have set before us, Lord, and that we just we cast everything aside. It's really interesting how, how our messages always seem to do this, Lord God, and we're on Sundays in Genesis, we're reading about Jacob and finishing well now. And this idea, you know, of casting everything aside that's going to hinder us from fully committing and walking before you, Lord God. And I just pray that for us right now, Lord, that we're able to walk before you, that we're able to take those steps that you are calling us to take, Lord. That we're able to pour into those individuals that you've called us to pour into, that that legacy of your church may continue, Lord. And that we may glorify you in every step we take and every choice we make and every decision we make. We love you. We give you our praise. We ask that you just go before us, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Oikos, we love you guys, and we can't wait to just be with you on, back again on Thursday nights. Have a great night. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to follow We Are Oikos on Facebook, Instagram, and now you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay up to date with all of our messages, and we can't wait to see you again.